Hey there, welcome to today's YouTube video. We're diving into a fascinating example of pairs trading featuring two iconic companies, Coca-Cola, KO, and PepsiCo, PEP. First, the code imports the necessary libraries for the task at hand, which include IO for importing data, RE for regular expressions, requests for making web requests, NumPy for scientific computing, Pandas for data manipulation, and Matplotlib for visualizations. Then, a function called getData is defined, which takes in four parameters, tickers, the assets under consideration, start and end dates for the data, and a frequency at which the data will be collected. Inside the getData function, a dictionary called OHLC is defined as an empty object to store the data. Next, a request is made to the Yahoo Finance website to get the current price history for the SPY stock. This is done by creating a session object and retrieving the cookies and crumb values from the website. These values are important for authentication. Then, a for loop is used to iterate through the tickers and retrieve their individual data. The function constructs a specific URL for each ticker using its respective start and end dates, frequency, and crumb value. The data is then requested and stored in the OHLC dictionary. Once the data is retrieved, it is cleaned and converted into a readable format using the pd.read underscore csv and pd.to underscore numeric functions. The final step is to return the OHLC dictionary with the desired data. In the last few lines of code, the assets under consideration are defined, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, and the get data function is called, retrieving the historical price data for both assets and storing them in the data variable. This data can then be further manipulated or analyzed as needed. First line of code defines the transaction cost, DC, as minus 0.0005. Next, a data frame named pairs is created with two columns, pep and tko. The pep column represents the return of the asset pep from the previous day, and the tko column represents the return of the asset ko from the previous day. These returns are calculated by dividing the close price of the asset by the close price from two days ago and subtracting one. In the next line of code, a new column called target is added to the pair's data frame. This column contains the minimum value from either the PEP or TKO column. This will be used as a criteria to select which asset to buy. The next line of code adds a new column named correlation to the pair's data frame. This column calculates the correlation between the returns of PEP and KO from the previous day. The correlation is calculated by taking the returns from the past 20 days and using a moving window of 9 days. The signal variable is then created which is equal to true if the correlation between PEP and KO is less than 0.9. This signal acts as a trigger for buying the asset with the lowest return from the previous day. The next line of code creates a variable named holding yesterday position, which checks if the asset bought the previous day was profitable. If it was not profitable, the asset is held for another day. The no money variable is then created, which is equal to true if there is no money available to buy the asset. This occurs if the signal was triggered the previous day and the asset bought was not profitable. This prevents the code from buying an asset if there is no money available. Next, two new columns named PEP and KO are added to the pair's data frame. These columns calculate the return of PEP and KO for the current day, taking into account the transaction costs and any predetermined criteria for when to buy or sell the asset. The returns column is then created, which calculates the return for the current day. If the signal is triggered, the return will be either from PEP or KO, depending on which asset has the lowest return from the previous day. If the signal is not triggered, the return will be NAN. The final line of code creates a new column named Cumulative Return, which calculates the cumulative return by adding up all the daily returns from the returns column. This allows for the tracking of the overall performance of the strategy.
first line of code defines a new variable called return pep and assigns it the value of the ratio of the close column of the pep dataset to the open column of the pep dataset, minus 1. The second line of code defines another new variable called by hold pep and assigns it the value of the ratio of the adjective close column of the pep dataset to the first value in the adjective close column of the pep dataset, minus 1. This is then converted to a float before being subtracted by 1. The third line of code is a comment and does not affect the code. The fourth line of code follows the same structure as the first and second lines, but this time it is using data from the KO dataset. The fifth line of code follows the same structure as the first and second lines, but this time it is using data from the KO dataset. The sixth line of code is a comment and does not affect the code. The seventh line of code defines a new variable called return both and assigns it the value of the average of the return pep and return KO variables. This is calculated by adding the two variables together and dividing the sum by two. The eighth line of code then defines another new variable called by hold both and assigns it the value of the average of the by hold pep and by hold go variables. In this case, the average is calculated by adding the two variables together, dividing the sum by two, and then filling any missing values using the fill method. First line of the code selects the returns column from the pairs data frame and drops any rows that have missing values. The second line does the same for the cumulative return column. Next, the code creates a figure object and a set of axes with a specific size. Then, it calculates the histogram, hist1, and the bin size, bins1, for the return both column, which is a combination of the returns from both pairs. It sets the width for the bars in the histogram and calculates the center points for each bar. The next line plots a bar graph with the calculated values, labeling it as 50-50 returns. The code then calculates the histogram and bin size for the returns column, which is the returns specifically from the pairs trading strategy. It then plots this histogram on the same axis as the previous one, labeling it as pairs trading. After displaying the plot, the code prints the header equals 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 strategy returns equals 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 and then calculates and prints the mean return and standard deviation of the returns from the pairs trading strategy. The next lines print out the worst and best returns from the strategy, as well as the lower, median, and upper quantiles. Each value is rounded to two decimal places and displayed as a percentage. Overall, this code plots a comparative histogram of the returns from the 50-50 returns and pairs trading strategies, and then calculates and prints various metrics to evaluate the performance of the pairs trading strategy. first line is just a comment, so it is not a part of the code. The second line calculates the execution rate by dividing the length of the returns list by the length of the return both list. The third line calculates the maximum drawdown by taking the maximum difference between the cumulative returns and the current returns, multiplying it by 100 and rounding it to two decimal places. The fourth line creates a mask that contains boolean values, true or false, based on whether each element in the returns list is less than zero. The fifth line calculates the differences between consecutive values in the mask and converts them to integers. The sixth line creates a new mask that contains true only when the original mask is true and the start of a new negative streak is detected. The seventh line uses this new mask to filter out the returns that occur after the start of a new negative streak. The eighth line creates a new variable it by assigning cumulative sum values to each element in the filtered list. The ninth line uses this id variable in the filtered returns list to count the number of negative returns at the beginning of each negative streak. The tenth line calculates the maximum bad drawdown by taking the maximum negative value from the filtered returns list and multiplying it by 100, rounding it to two decimal places. The eleventh and twelfth lines create two new variables positive and negative that contain only positive and negative values from the returns list respectively. The thirteenth line calculates the win rate by dividing the length of positive list by the sum of the lengths of positive and negative lists, multiplying it by 100 and rounding it to two decimal places. 
The 14th line calculates the beta value by finding the correlation between returns and return both lists and rounding it to two decimal places. The 15th line calculates the sharp ratio by dividing the final cumulative return value by its standard deviation and round it to two decimal places. The 16th line calculates the total return by multiplying the final cumulative return value by 100 and rounding it to two decimal places. At first, the code creates a figure with a specific size of 16 by 6 using the plt.figure function. Next, it plots two lines on the figure using plt.plot. The first line represents the buy and hold strategy with a weight allocation of 50-50. The second line represents the pair's trading strategy and is colored coral. After that, the code adds labels to the x-axis and y-axis using plt.slabel and plt.label respectively. Then, the code adjusts the margins of the plot using plt.margins. Next, a horizontal dashed line is added at y equals 0 using plt.axlin. The legend for the two lines on the plot is then added using plt.legend. The plt.show function is used to display the figure. After the figure is shown, the code then prints the cumulative return, execution rate, win rate, maximum loss, maximum consecutive loss, beta, and sharp ratio. Finally, there is a comment explaining that the return decay from 2011 onwards may be due to overfitting, and that the returns are not reinvested. The first line of the code defines a variable called buy hold bothit and assigns it a value based on the stock prices of PEP and KO. It calculates the percentage change in their adjusted closing prices over the last 252 days and takes the average of those values. Then, any missing values are filled using the previous non-null value, fill. The next line defines a variable called strategy YTD and assigns it a value based on the cumulative sum of returns over the last 92 days. The next few lines use the matplotlib library to create a plot and label it with the buy and hold 50-50 performance and pairs trading performance. The plot also has labels for the x and y axis, sets margins, adds a horizontal line at y equals 0, and displays a legend. The last two lines use print statements to display the buy and hold performance and strategy performance as a percentage, with the date of July 1, 2020. In summary, the code performs calculations and creates a plot to compare the performance of buy and hold 50-50 and pairs trading strategies using PEP and KO stock prices. It also displays the performance of each strategy as a percentage, 